Hi everyone, uh, welcome to TV and Film Focus. Uh, I'm Victoria Main. I'm here today uh, with my guest, uh, Dale Botton. Dale is uh, a writer, actor, uh, producer, native of the area, and uh, he's been doing stuff for a long time. So thanks for being here, Dale. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, um, so you've written, uh, let's start with kind of some of the stuff you've written. Um, you've written uh, a number of screenplays, Yes. Um, and you, you've won some awards. Yes. Uh, so you've had some success with those screenplays. Yes. Um, and then recently you did, uh, one of the subjects of one of your screenplays is the Duluth lynchings, correct? correct. Um, and you did what's called a short proof of concept film. Right. Uh, to illustrate that story. Correct. Um, so tell us about that a little bit. Who worked on that with you? How did you were a producer on that? Yes. And that was based on your script. Yes. So tell us a little bit. Talk about that a little okay. bit. Okay. Well, the script, the feature script is um, is based on Michael Fito's book, The Lynchings in Duluth. Mm -hmm. And uh, many, many years ago, about twelve years ago now, um, a friend of mine, uh, Matt Setner, who I miss dearly, who passed away, was going to direct a two-act stage play of mine and we were on the uh, Wisconsin Point watching his kids swim and he says Dale you got to read this book and I said Matt I don't have time to read a book and he says how bad you want me to direct your play I said I'll read the book the book turned out to be uh, Michael Fito's book The Lynchings in Duluth and I got about a third of the way through it and I said I gotta do something with this Them the ones that got you fired? One of them, the tall one. Come on, let's go, Elmer. Uh-uh, I ain't going nowhere. I'm hungry, and I'm going to eat. Morning, gents. What can I get you? Uh, we got a great deal today on uh, hotcakes, eggs, bacon, for only 75 cents, including a beverage. Sheriff sure, niggas, yeah? I serve people with money. I haven't served you. Oscar, you decided what you want yet? No, Ellen needs a little more time, Mike. You go ahead and start with those guys. We're in no hurry. Uh, Mike don't know no better. He thinks niggers is real people. Bitch, can't even have a Sunday morning breakfast in peace. The missus and me are trying to have a nice relaxing after church meal here and you two are making that kind of difficult. Who are you? I'm just an ordinary guy who don't like people using bad language in front of ladies. Now I think you owe them an apology. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You just go back, sit down, and enjoy your meal. Wait a minute, boys. I went to uh, see Michael uh, when he was up from uh, Coon Rapids, and I said, hey, can I do a speculation script on your book? And he said, sure, go ahead. Uh, about a year later, I sent him the first draft, and he said, yeah, this is, this is different and better than the rest of them. I said, okay, now I need the rights. And he said, okay, so we settled on a, on a, on a price, and I <clears throat> pretty much crawled on my hands and knees into the bank and said, please, 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 won't you give me enough money to buy the rights to this book? And they were dumb enough to do it. Um, I bought the rights to the book, and to make a long story a little bit longer, um, in 2010, it won the uh, uh, grand prize at the Screenwriting Exposition in Los Angeles, sponsored by Creative Screenwriting Magazine. And <clears throat> through Ricky McManus um, it, on the Minnesota Film Board, um, I, in a roundabout way, connected with, um, uh, with uh, Ben Wellington, uh, who connected me with Alex Gutterman. Who's who has, also been a guest on this show. As a, and I, yes. As has Ricky. So. <laughs> as has Ricky. And 
Alex uh, took an interest in the script and he said, um, you know, we should, you know, we should maybe form a little committee to try to uh, 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 see, make sure that this film, when it, if and when it does get made, it is a, a very positive film instead of a, um, uh, instead of a negative film to, 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 to bring us together more rather than divide us. And uh, so we did that. And Alex has been after me to, to do a, well, I call it a teaser scene, but it's a proof of concept scene. Um, which is a simply a clip out of the screenplay that kind of embodies what the whole screenplay is about. And uh, eventually, uh, in 2016, I decided to do that. And <clears throat> I was looking around for a production a producer, and I run across uh, Brandon Cole, who has been a guest on this yes, program. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and. and um, Brandon, I, I went to Brandon and I said, hey, you know, I've got this script and I want to do this teaser scene. And he jumped right on it, him and his crew. It was their first paid gig. They were, they were fresh out of school. And it was my first gig as a producer. And eventually in the summer of 2016, uh, we got it made. Um, being there were production challenges, sure. to use an old army word. Um, there were production challenges, and eventually I found a, an editor, um, Chris Linder, uh, who was listed as Chris Linder on, on, on my credits, and, <clears throat> and, and now is, uh, is called, he, he changed his name to uh, Kalen, Kalen Mars was an amazing, amazing editor. Just a very, very... Uh, had yeah. some contact with Kalen. He's it, a great guy. Oh, he is, yes. And he put the... <clears throat> he did the final edit on it, and it turned out... It, it turned out way better than I was... I, I thought it might. You know. And it was accepted at two separate uh, film festivals. Uh, the Great Lakes International Film Festival and the Tyler Mann Film Festival uh, in Wheaton, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. And at the, Wheat, at the Tyler Mann Festival, it, uh, it, won the, uh, it won a social awareness award. Nice. Yeah. So you were working with uh, local folks on this, Correct. right? Yep. Brandon Cole, Kalen Mars. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how was the experience of all of you? You know, you, you were first time producer, Brandon and his team are first time getting paid, and then this is and your story is different than what they usually do. Uh, they're very, yeah. you know, they do a lot of horror stuff, and right. So, yeah. uh, so you know, give me a little bit of the backstage skinny on how <laughs> how that worked for everybody. How long did it take you to shoot this trailer? It's a ten minute film, by the way, and I've seen it, and it's very, very good. Uh, it's well shot. It's well directed. It looks great. Um, how long did it take you to shoot that? Uh, we started the the set that we found um, Mike's Western Cafe in West Duluth, or the uh, yeah West Duluth. Um, is, it the West, is it West Duluth or is it the West End? West, uh, it's West Duluth, twenty okay. uh, eighth about twenty eighth Avenue West. That's the West is it, End. Is it? I don't know. Okay. okay. I, I'm from Superior. I forgive you. I'm from Superior. I've, I'm what from West Duluth, and you I know, forgive I'm, you, Dale. I'm a Wisconsinite. All right. Uh, <clears throat> But we could only get that space uh, from Friday afternoon until, uh, no, Saturday afternoon until Sunday evening. And so, yeah, it was, it was a squeaker. Um, <clears> that <throat> was co-directed um, and the, I have to say that I've, extremely proud of, of the actors and especially the crew who had to put all this stuff together in a, in, in a hurry. Um, <clears throat> one, of my, uh, one of my sons was a contractor, is a contractor, and I said, you know, we need this, the end of this, uh, of this scene of the, towards, towards the windows, it isn't right for 1920. And he says, well, we can change that. So he came in and within probably two hours, 
he, he built a set and, and, and put it up. And yeah, I was very proud of them. Um, <clears throat> so you shot this thing in just a little over 24 hours? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, w I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed that looking at it because it, it really does uh, yeah. look nice. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And that, um, it was edited three different, by three different editors, and the final edit was Kalen's edit, and uh, he tweaked it to perfection, as much perfection as, as you can get. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so okay, you... How, how long have you been, uh, I know that you've been writing for a long time. Um, how, how long have you kind of been involved in the film and TV community here locally? Locally? Uh, well, I started in, in theater um, right. back when I was young and happy in college. And, uh, and probably I got into the actual local film world when I wrote the uh, lynching script. Okay. Um, hate storm. Um, it wasn't, by the way, when it when it won the grand prize, it wasn't called hate storm. It was called uh, Alamo Duluth Anatomy of a Lynching. And when I won the grand prize, part of that grand prize was uh, what they call coverage, which is simply a professional that goes through the script and and explains what he thinks works well and what he thinks should you know gotcha. should be changed. Yep. So I got coverage on it, uh, <clears throat> and <coughs> excuse me. One of the things he he said was probably the 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 title is too long, so you should probably uh, shorten it to something a little bit more uh, easier to remember. And the last thing he said, one of the last things he said, and I'll never forget this, is. Um, he said, the light at the end of this tunnel is that the material is potential Oscar bait. And I, I read that and I said, whoa, you know, this is coming from a, a, a pro in LA. You know. So Oscar bait meaning, meaning big name actors may be interested in participating in this film uh, because it's the kind of film that gets the Academy's attention. Correct. Okay. That is correct. So that's that's great. That's a great thing to have at the end of your coverage pages. <laughs> it is uh, for sure. Um, <clears throat> so you know, as as you and I have talked, um, you know, I've had a lot of the folks in the local TV and film industry, uh, folks that are creative, on this show, um, and one of the things we always talk about is is how how you feel, how everybody feels the community, the creative community has treated them. Like, do you feel like people have been supportive and helpful, or or do you feel like it's uh, competitive? And you know, how, how do you feel about it? It's 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 like a football team, two football teams. Um, sometimes when you get out there, you're in competition with each other, but when the competition is done, um, you sit down and you have beers, you know, and. Uh, yeah, I, they've been very supportive. Um, most of the people who worked on my teaser scene, uh, Hate Storm, a prologue, um, said they would do it for free. I said, you know, I, I, I want to pay people if I can. Yeah. At, at least something. But most of them said, hey, I'll do it because it's such a powerful thing. And I said, well, okay, but I, I, I want to pay. Which, you know, it took me... It, it took me another year to recover from that, but you know, I'm glad I did it that way. Yeah. So yeah, the film community has been very, very supportive of, of uh, local films. Well, and and you've as you know as an actor, which is you know the other the other part of Dale, um, <laughs> you've done plenty of uh, local stuff with you know indie stuff mm -hmm. in this part of the world, and um, worked with a lot of those filmmakers <clears throat> in that context too. Right. How, how has that experience been for you? Uh, that has been fabulous. It really has. Um, actually, my very first role ever was in 92. I played a still photographer in Iron Will. And I had 22 days of shooting with him. Died and went to heaven. Uh, <clears throat> and 
when I started talking with Alex Gutterman about the, 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 the lynching script, uh, that's when he was just starting to formulate his first feature in winter. And he said, you know, how'd you like to audition for my, for my, my f first feature? And I said, sure. So he typecast me as a dying grandfather. Uh, wasn't much of a stretch for me. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, after that, I, I heard about uh, No Blood of Mine, which was done by Wesley Ellenwood out of, out of the cities up here in Duluth. And so I auditioned for the role of a really nasty, no good businessman. And that wasn't much of a stretch for me either. So, you know, I, so far I haven't had much challenges. Um, and then I've done, well, actually I did a, a, an evil priest in what was then called uh, Older Than America that was shot up in ESCO in, I think, 2006, around there, six or eight. Uh, <clears throat> and I've done quite a bit of, of uh, short films and you know at this level you don't do it for the money right right money's great if it's there but you do it for two reasons you do it for the art you do it for the credits mm -hmm. because credits are everything in the biz yep everything in the biz um and you do it to help out your 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 fellow filmmaker support the other creators support the other creators help them right. get their projects that done. is correct you're here and, so. <laughs> you're here to that as a matter of fact i i, I enjoyed what I, I did from one of your projects i yes, enjoyed it yeah, very very much public uh, full disclosure uh, dale uh, participated uh, along with kathy laxo mm -hmm. uh, in a scene for something that i'm working on uh, called the witches of gitchy um Dell was not a witch, so <laughs> <coughs> just FYI. Um, that depends on who you talk to. Yeah, uh, but uh, which is still very much a work in progress, and I'm kind of trying to decide where that's where that's mm -hmm. going to go. But um, you, you may be hearing from me again Great. on that. I can't wait. Um, so okay, so we've kind of talked about you know what got you, you know what you've been doing up until now, and and what's so let's talk a little bit about. Um, what do you see? What are, you, what are your next goals? What do, you, what do you want to see happen? What are your next markers that you'd like to hit um, with your work? Um, I've done, locally, speaking locally, I did a, a script about, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, um, about five dogs. It's a family thing, believe it or not, out of me. Um, it's about five dogs in Duluth, Minnesota. Um, could be done computer graphics, or it could be done with you know animals. It, uh, it's about uh, five dogs and the aftermath of 9/11. And being set in Duluth, it shows a lot of the Duluth area. Um, I'd like to look around to see if I can't find somebody to. Uh, to take on that project because it, it's like I say, it's a family script and it's fun. Uh, is this script. a feature screenplay? It's a feature. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> if anyone's interested in producing, help helping Dale produce the five dogs story. It's it's uh, called uh, the name of it is P Mail. <laughs> and it, yes, I'm, and I'm it, sorry. What? <laughs> it involves it involves a, a five dogs and a hybrid. Yes. <laughs> Okay, P mail. <laughs> the name of yeah. Um, okay, so um, and 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 also on the on the getting back to uh, hate and you've written a couple of other scripts too. Uh, five or six. Yeah. yeah um, let me just see here. Um, Everybody's children. Yeah. The that, Romeo and Juliet scam. Mm -hmm. Of course, Devil's Dancing and Dead People was a play. Was I saw I saw that play. play. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that could be changed into a film really easy too. Oh, for sure. And it takes place in Superior or Duluth or somewhere near a big body. For sure. Water. So sure. are there are there other of your scripts you'd like to see produced locally or or, or produced elsewhere? Um, in my experience, uh, 
kind of running with the big dogs and well not running with the big dogs watching them run you know in in Los Angeles um I realized that it's a lot easier to sell a screenplay that is based on an even moderately successful book. And so I said, okay, I'll write a book. And you did write a <laughs> and book. And I did write a book. Called A Nice Relaxing Sea Cruise. A Nice Relaxing Sea Cruise, okay. which you really should read someday. I will. I, re- I read a portion of it on, uh, what is it, is it Amazon that I read it on today? Uh, it could be. Where there's a sample of the book you can read? Amazon and, and Google Books, I think, has some, oh, okay. one, too. Um, a Nice Relaxing Sea Cruise, um, I'm currently in... A no- well, originally a novel. Now you have actually completed a screenplay based have, on yes. that novel. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little bit about that story. What is that story? It's a fun story. It's it's again. It's a it's kind of a family thing. It's about a a guy who inherits. He's from the Midwest, and he inherits a a house on the West Coast that contains directions to a fabulous treasure, the treasure of Cocos Island, which is a real treasure. Uh, well, it was I guess they found it now. Um, and he finds the uh, diary that's got the directions in it and he goes through a bunch of machinations there in in the little town on the west coast and gets kidnapped by some of the townspeople who want to force him to take him to, to find the treasure and so they go to Cocos Island and they don't find the treasure but they do get uh, captured by real modern day pirates and they force them, want to force them to find treasure who, which they think now has been moved to the jungles of Peru. So they run around the jungles on the, and, and, and this to, guy, our, our, our protagonist here is a, a school teacher. He's a correct? school teacher. He's okay. a part-time school teacher and he's a very, um, uh, his, his the love of his, his life on television was Marianne in 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 um, uh, Gilligan's Island. <laughs> so if that tells you anything about his persona, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that's who he was in love with. All right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the screen. Anybody who adapts a book, I have to say that it it is much more difficult because the book that I wrote is an I book. It's a, it's a first person. I did this, I did that. Mm-hmm. Adapting that to screen gotcha. is a lot sure. more difficult because you have to figure out a way to put in the character's thoughts on screen. And the only, there's two or three ways of doing that. One is is to uh, uh, have the character relate it uh, as a narrator, which means you know that he survived, otherwise he wouldn't be narrating it. Right. Or you could have it in the character's head in Echo, which sometimes happens. Uh, or you could have a sounding board. Now, Shakespeare was big for sounding boards, you know, uh, saying something and then bouncing it off another person. This, those are the three ways that I know of to do an I book. Uh, that was that was difficult, even in a book that I wrote. Sure, sure. So, well, uh, I can see the well, and also getting other characters' perspectives, and how do you you know how do you express that? Because um, it changes from being a first-person account to being essentially everybody's account, correct? Even even though it's you know it's it's one person at a time, kind of right. Um, but this is a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oof. It is. It, it took well uh, a year for the first draft and another year to, you know. I did a lot of research because I like to be a stickler. Um, even with fiction, I like to be a stickler as much as possible. So I researched, researched uh, Peru and I researched Cocos Island and whatnot uh, quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So I could, uh, uh, so I could be as accurate as possible, but you know, you got you have to take a poetic license every now and then. Oh sure, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so so maybe you know, at some point, will you be shopping around the screenplay to local folks, or 
or send it uh, off to other folks? Well, uh, I'll be shopping around to anybody who decides they want to make it. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, it's it takes place on the West Coast. I'm not sure that local um, producers would want to uh, do something that doesn't doesn't pertain really to this area. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'm shopping my screenplays around to anybody who wants to do them. Okay. Uh, well, you know. You and I, uh, you know, I hope that at some point we'll do some more stuff together. Oh, that yeah. would be super fun. That'd be great. Um, yeah. But I, I will run into you, of course, all over the place at various, <laughs> various film and yep. theater things, and uh, I'll see you there. But, uh, but thanks for being with us today, oh, Dale. Thank you for inviting me. Have I missed me. anything? Is there anything else you want to cover? Maybe a little advice. Oh, absolutely. A little advice to, to wannabe. Um, yeah. Um, Absolutely. The first thing is don't quit. The second thing is don't quit. And the third thing is don't quit. I like that. Yeah. So, and that's I, advice for all creatives. I learned that. Writers, in, actors, directors. I learned that directors. in the Marine Corps. You know, you quit, you die, so don't quit. Don't quit. Yeah. You heard it here, kids. <laughs> don't quit. Don't if quit. you're a creative person out there that's going to write a screenplay or you want to direct a screenplay or you're going to be in a, you want to be an actor, don't quit. That's right. That's right. Acting, you know, I found that no matter what you look like, no matter uh, small, tall, heavy, skinny, if a director, if, if you're what the, the director wants in a character, they'll hire you no matter what. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah. So, you know, if you, you don't, you don't have to be a, 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 a Richard Chamberlain, I guess maybe I'm dating myself. Yeah. Just a tiny Just bit. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> or Brad Pitt will Brad say Pitt, for the... Brad Pitt, there we go. The, you don't have to be a Brad Pitt. <laughs> or, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, to be a success. And There's a lot more parts out there than leading man and leading lady. There's exactly. All kinds of... You yep. Know, uh, yep. Good advice. Thank you. Good advice yep. indeed. Well, thank you, Dale. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks for being here today. And uh, I know I'll see you around, so. You will. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time on TV and Film Focus.